I'm going to be giving us a brief course on these German things and not a German language, but uh, English with the German uh, influence, basically. And it's useful in spelling bees. And uh, German is one of the most like hated ones in spelling bees because um, a lot of people don't like them. It's it's sort of looked at as hard. But when we break it down, you, you'll see how easy it is after we break it down and look at all the patterns. So first of all, I'm going to be giving a little introduction. Let's see. There we go. Uh, so my name is Jane Zhang. I'm pretty sure most of you guys know me by now. Uh, I've been helping out the Canada Super Spelling Bee organization, and I'm just here to give you guys this course. And I'm, uh, I've been a competitor of Scripps National Spelling Bee for many years. And yeah, so I'm also a re regional champion. And if at any point you guys have any questions, just say it in the chat or even just unmute yourself and say it out loud. And it's fine if you interrupt me. Uh, that's, that'll be totally be fine. And I have the chat open, so uh, yeah. And uh, OK, whatever, the email thing. So yeah, we'll move on. So, so first of all, uh, this class course will be going on from 6.05 to 6.55. So just send out for that. So th these are the sections that I'm going to be teaching you guys. I'm going to be giving you guys the basic questions, like what's a root or what's a language pattern, and asking you guys if you know what that is. The simplicity of the language under its disguise of like it may seem hard but it's actually a lot easier if you could break it down uh look at the common patterns that will help you spell the word or the words uh all the roots that you could look out for and the spellings and stuff like that and we'll go over it after so first of all the basic questions so first of all what's a root does anybody know what a root? i'm pretty sure most of you guys know what a root is so either you could, yeah, you could unmute a thar. You can just unmute and just say it. What's the root in spelling? In spelling, a root is kind of like things that make up a word. Yeah, yeah. So that's one way, something that makes up a word. Are there any amount of letters that make up a word? Yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that's a good definition. Any other add-ons to that? Anybody want to? Yep, go ahead, Sophie. I like the origin words of a word. Yeah, oh, that's even adding on more. So origin and uh, things that add on to a word. So basically, like little snippets of a word that go on to each other. And by the way, just to know, you guys may want to take notes during this. So yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys already know most of these things, but I just want to go over it a little bit more. And Brock says, root is a noun and prefixes and suffixes. Yep. And kind of like, yeah, adjectives, kind of. So they basically describe ish what the word's going to mean or what the word is in a sense. So yeah, they're just basically small snippets like biology, bio means life. That's a root. And prefixes and suffixes, those are types of roots. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail because pretty sure you guys know what those are. Now, what's a language pattern? They're not roots, but what's a language pattern? Does anybody want to give any thought on that. You could just unmute if you want to talk or put it in the chat. What is a root? I mean, not a root, sorry. What is a language pattern? I said the wrong one. Yeah, go ahead, just unmute. I thought, what's a language pattern? Uh, a pattern that occurs in languages, like in Latin, you don't have any case. That might be a Latin language pattern, I mean. Yes, that's perfect. That's exactly a language pattern just a pattern that appears in a language, basically. So like the perfect example, Latin, um, they didn't have the letter K in the old their old empire. So they never had any Ks now when you go into the Latin words. So that's a language pattern. And does anybody know what a Germanic language is? What Germanic languages are? Yeah, go ahead, Arthur. <laughs> um, Germanic languages are languages that are from Germany and um... Northern Europe. Yeah, basically. Germanic languages, um, yeah, kind of Germany, but... Um, also Norway and that stuff. Exactly, yeah. So basically, Germanic languages are... Um, English is a Germanic language. Um, German is a Germanic language. And all those languages that use... Um, that are kind of like English. Like, um, uh, yeah, basically like German, English, and there's a few others... Uh, Wait, like so Dutch. 
Yeah. So ahead. languages that use actual words, so not like Japanese and Chinese, but like with like actual like ABC, like the alphabet yeah, yeah, or I, dramatic. I, I, yeah, yeah. So um, there are two of those kinds. There's so there's um the symbol which is like um Chinese, Japanese, Korean th that that section. There's also Romance languages, which is like anything under Latin. So Latin, French, Portuguese, those are Romance languages. And then what we're talking about is Germanic languages, which are um, German, Dutch, uh, English. And those two still use, um, yeah, the al alphabet in a sense. Yeah, go ahead, Arthur. Uh, I have two questions about Romance languages. Sure. Well, this is not the class, but yeah, go ahead. So, um, is French a romance language? Yes, French is a romance language. What about the, English? English is not a romance language. It's what's derived from Germanic languages. Okay, and my second question about romance languages, um, they come from Romania, right? Uh, sort of, um, romance languages, they're from the Roman Empire, which is why it's romance languages. When... The Roman Empire took over the entire, basically, of Europe. They had Latin, and then Latin split off into many little languages, like French, uh, things like that. That's how Romance languages are. Awesome. Romanian is a Romance language, though. Yeah, go, go ahead, Sophie. This is very off topic, but what's the difference between a Romance language and a, and a Germanic language? Uh, so Germanic is, um, is mostly in the German areas, where it's like, German, English, that's where it's derived. It's mostly geography. Like the Romance language is from the Roman Empire. So everything that was in the Roman Empire, once the Roman Empire took over uh, France, um, it took over uh, Portugal, it took over a bunch of places. So now Italian, Portuguese, French, those are all Romance languages. But yeah, that's a different topic, I guess. So now, give, does anybody have any examples of uh, German derived words in English? Oh, okay. never mind. Wait, okay. what? I mean, uh, I I had this word in spelling bee, and it was like be Wusten Slash or something like yeah, that. Yeah, okay, that one's a really hard one, but yes, that's a German word. And I think it was like, word... I think it was like B E yeah. W U S S T S E I N S L A G E. Yes, that's think... correct. Yeah, that's correct. That that got very popular because of a 2018 Scripps National Spelling Bee like mess up but that was very popular after the time but yeah Meister Singer that's a good one and he got so was SCH uh that's actually true like school yeah go ahead Atharv Atharv um afterwards real school and um, um the other one is I forgot okay well yeah so there are those spelling bee words which is like real school Meister Singer but they're also basic words like pretzel or school or yeah. kindergarten those are all German, German derived words that you never really realized. But yeah, so I'll go over those later. And what and about then, the word Bewusstseinslager? Yes, that is that is German. Uh, we'll go over the patterns. It's in the slide. So it, it's in the slideshow. But yeah, we, we need to kind of go on because time. But yeah. So what are some other patterns that you see? Uh, one of them was said in chat, the SCH. Oh, yeah, I was going to say SCH. Okay, sorry. But yeah, so uh, SCH, basically, like school and stuff like that. Any other patterns that anybody wants to just anything you might see in some German words? Yeah, go ahead. I thought. Mm, I, oh, okay. Um, <laughs> actually, never mind. Okay, Sophie, go ahead. I was going to say double letters, but that doesn't really make sense. <laughs> Double letters, there are there's a pattern that uses double S a lot, but we'll go. Yeah, over that's something that, yeah, that I noticed. Yeah. That's definitely something that goes on in uh, German, but we'll go on with that. Uh next slide. So German words you see like pretzel, dox hunt. Um, does anybody know what dox hunt is? A dox hunt? It's a type of breed of dog that are super like like sausages. Yeah, yeah, basically, yeah. And we'll go over that after. And then Edelweiss. So you have the pretzel. We have Dachshund, the, the, the sausage dog, and then we have Edelweiss, which is a flower, basically. And yeah, so those are some pretty common uh, German words that we hear quite often. And you guys might want to take notes. It's just an extra thing. So now look at these words. So we have Bewusstseinslager, Wehrmacht, and Pfefferness. These are German I words. pronounced it wrong, but I got the spelling right. 
yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay, so uh, what's difficult about Bubastein Saga? Just give me something quickly, just somebody. Yeah, Athar, go ahead. <laughs> How long? Oh, I keep interrupting. It has a few okay. double letters and it's also very long. Yes. So it's like, also, it kind of ends with Laga, but it's actually ending with E. Yes, yes, the Aga. That's good. That's a good note. What about Bermacht? What about the next word? Yeah, just go ahead, uh, Sophie. So good at time. The H and the R is kind of difficult, I guess, because you would just think it's a W E R. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty important. And I have another about, one. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, mocked, um, you might think something like M O C T or M O K T. Yes, yes. Instead that's M A C H T. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty important. And we'll go over that after. And then Pfefferness. Anybody wants to? Just one thing. Yeah, Athar, just one thing. We can go over. There are double Fs and um, the first part. Is it called Pfefferness? Yeah, Pfefferness. Or oh, there's kind of a pre pepper, but that's that's only its alternate pronunciation and it's very small. But yeah, normally it's Pfefferness. The first part is kind of hard. Yeah, pef yeah. Pfefferness. Yeah, okay. So uh, basically for the design saga, B, E, and S, L are easy enough, like sla and B. That sounds pretty easy. But the W equals V for Wurststein Slager, the double S or one S, the E, I, the G, E, and for Wehrmacht, all these different things, Pfefferness, the PF or FF, and the USS. Like, those are weird things that German words have. So now let's go over the common patterns. I want to go over this uh, quick enough so I can go, go over a lot of things. Wait a minute, can you please go back? Um, I was actually going to write those words. Oh, okay, go ahead. Okay, thanks. Yep. It's just that I do have a lot of things, so hopefully we can get over with this, because there's a lot of good notes that you guys can take. So just, uh, as soon as I thought I was done, hopefully you guys are, you good? Um, I'm almost done. Take your time. So yeah, there's, so in Wehrmacht, the E-H-R, that's pretty weird, and then there's a lot of things that we can go over, and by the end, you guys will see it's super simple, but I hopefully I can get the time done. Okay, and then. Nice. Okay. So now some common patterns. So in Realschule, these are some language patterns. So A, the A sound is with spelled with an E. So you guys should write this all down. A is spelled with an E, it's like Ray, Ray, Alshula. But then at the same time, when you hear Ver, that's W E H R. That's a root, and and we'll go over that after. But most of the time, if you hear A. In German, it's E, so Realschule. That's pretty important. So Realschule, and then the A sound, Realschule, Realschule is spelled with an A. And ignore the sometimes O for now because that might get a little complicated. But for now, the Real, all that's spelled with an A. So if you're Real, it's not real, it's Real. So it's it's a different spelling, and then. In Realschule, the S C H all together make the one sound sh like sh like that. So Real sh. So every time you hear the sh sound, it's S C H, and that's pretty common. But then at the same time, if you have like school S C H O O L, that's also a pattern. So we'll go over that after. But if you hear the sh sound, it's S C H most of the time. And then the U sound Realschule, that's a U. So that's also common. Like the they they make everything more rich, like Ray all true la. Like they have that weird uh way of saying things, but it's it's pretty cool. I like um the way they do it. And then the E at the ending is not real shul, it's real shul la. So the E at the ending always makes the us, not always, but if you hear the us uh sound at the ending, then it's uh, which is E. So it's like bewusst sign sla ga. Real shul la. Like it has the uh sounding at the ending. So that's important. Yeah, that that's pretty important. And now Bewusstsein Slaga, the V sound is spelled with a W. That's pretty important. It might get a little complicated. V is spelled with a W. And the F sound is spelled with a V. So you might want to note that down. V, the V sound is spelled with a W. And the F sound is spelled with a V. So yeah, that's pretty good to not note down. And whenever you hear the, the S, sound the s sound 
it's mostly SS because the single S makes the Z sound. The single S makes the Z sound in German. So that's important. So whenever you hear like Z, it's one S, but whenever you hear S, it's double S in this case. That's important. And then next up, we have the I. The I sound is E I. Like um, Meister Singer, Meister Singer, E I. But it makes the I sound. And then the E sound is spelled with I E. Yeah, are you guys, it might be a little fast because I'm trying to get this all squished in, but take your time to take the notes. So I is E I, E is I E. <laughs> it's kind of complicated. So the I sound like Meister Singer is E I. And then, uh, yeah, it's V back, I E is E sound. Does that make sense? Give me some thumbs up if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, you guys got the notes down. It's sort of complicated. So that's why I wanted to get high level people, which is good. So, yeah. And then the og sound, or which is like the og slog, but the sign slogger has the e sound, but we already covered that. Next is anschauung. So this is another German word, anschauung. So we'll go over the stuff. Ah, ah, like anschau, ow. The ow sound is au. So whenever you ow, like like ow, I'm hurt in a sense. It's a u. So whenever you hear that, it's ow. And then the ung ending is common. On shao ung. That happens. And then. So on, on shao ung. And then that's, that's good. And then next up, we have schadenfreude. We have the sch again, sha. And then there's no PH, that's for Greek. I just want to note that out. And then in this case, oi, like schadenfreude, is EU. So au is AU, oi is EU. You guys can note the, write this down. And once you write it down, you guys can memorize it later. But when I when you check out these words, just use your notes for now. I Because this is a lot to memorize in a short period of time. Schadenfreude. And then the O sound is just O. Just want you guys to note that down. So whenever you hear O, it's just O. Like, there's no other thing. And that's that for that. <laughs> and then next up is the O sound. Like, uh, think of the word pickle in English. It's P-I-C-K-L-E. But in German, it's P-I-C-K-E-L. So German, they use E-L more than L-E. Like, pickle, pickle hauba. And let's try and pick out this word again. So pickle, P-I-C-K, that's pretty easy. And a pickle, E-L. And then for the H sound, it's H. For the O sound, it's A-U. We would note that down. And then B, how B. And the ending is E. Because So basically, does that make sense? Does that word make sense? <laughs> this is going by real quick. But yeah. You guys got that noted down? Not yet. OK, well, take your time. I'm almost done my notes. Okay, so now next we have, this is I think the last pattern for now, clobberyas, y, the sound y is with a j in this case. So like there's a German word yas <laughs> where it uses a j-a-s-s. -S. And then once again, you hear the s sound with a double s, but you don't hear clobberyas. Yas would be with one s in that case. So. That makes sense? Yeah, I thought you got a question. Um, in Europe, is the ya sound written as J? Uh, it depends. Um, there's a lot of different things. Like sometimes fajita, um, they use the fajita, they use the H as a J or something like that. Like it is, there's a lot of ways to do J and Y in that case. So I can't really answer that question. I don't know about it. Different languages have different tendencies to different languages. Oh, and we have more. Okay, so that's sound. That's is 
TZ, like pretzel. Think about pretzel. You don't hear you don't hear pretzel. It's pretzel. So T S sound is T Z. And next up, this is a really important one. The C H makes the H sound, the guttural sound. It's the weird like throat sound, like H, like you're trying to spit something out or something. And that's that's um, pretty famous in German, so it's really cool. H sound. Um, yep, that's 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 cool. And then it, but it also has that K sound. It's like, but it's. I don't know. It's it's weird. Um, uh, and then, so for example, the word "echt," "echt," that's that's something "echt" or "echt." It's it's weird. You can't do it with a dry throat though. Okay, so so let me just pick out "gleich Schaltung." Let me pick this word apart. So, what do you guys see? Give me some patterns that you see. yeah. Go ahead, Sophie. S C H. S C H. Yeah, for the H sound "gleich." What else? Yeah, go ahead, Atar. What is a guttural sound? Guttural sound means it's guttural. So guttural means throat. Like, it has that sound. That's what guttural means. CH is a guttural sound. You can switch it off later, but that's what a guttural sound is. So any other notes for gleich, schaltung? Yeah, Ria? Um, the EI. EI, yeah. EI making the I sound, gleich. Okay, what else? Any other? Any other notes? Okay, so another thing is the um, the S C H. So you have G L E I C H, and then S C H for the sh sound, and then all gly shall shall sorry, and then you have the ung ending again U N G. I'm not sure if that's a verb ending or something. I haven't actually searched that up yet, but that's an ending that is used quite often. And then next up. For the sake of time, I'll be going. I'll be going over Nietzschean, which is the E Nietzschean I E. This is just to show you guys that these patterns are in every, uh, in a lot of these words for German. So for Nietzschean is the I E, the sh, Nietzsche, T Z for the s, like Nietzschean, and then you have the S C H for the sh, and the E N at the ending. E N is also common, but yeah, Nietzschean is a, uh, or Nietzsche was a scientist, a German scientist, I think, or something. And <clears throat> yeah, so that's a note to take. So now the roots. Let me just take a quick swig of water. Okay, there we go. So first of all, ab. <clears throat> ab is, um, ab is a German root. That means away. So away from something, away from anything, I guess. Oh. So you can see it in the word abwehr. <clears throat> and next word, bear, this will be a root. That means defense, like military defense or something. So abwehr, now you guys, anytime you hear wehr, you'll notice about W-E-H-R. Does that make sense? Make sense? Sophie, you good? <laughs> I'm just yeah, I'm good. Okay, okay. So anytime you hear wehr, it's W-E-H-R. <clears throat> so that's a no. I just want to make sure you guys all know what I'm talking about because I don't want to go too fast, but I kind of am. So, can you um, uh, stop for a minute, please. Pardon? Can you please stop for a minute? Yep, yep. Go ahead. If you want me to stop, just say it. I'll stop. <laughs> yeah, and you got you can take your notes and yeah. So before you guys were talking about the uh, air or the a sound, remember a sound is with an e. But when you have W-E-H-R, meaning defense, then you know it's E-H for the A sound. So that's good for your roots. Uh, roots are basically language patterns, so that's really helpful. Yep. What does bear mean? Bear means defense, like military defense or defending a goal post or something. I don't know, but something like that. So a bear means German, a German military defense that's away from Germany or something. I'm not 100% sure you can search that up, but yeah. And then land wear, yeah. And in this case, since German and English are so close together, they're both Germanic languages. A lot of the things you'll see mean the same thing. Like in this case, land wear, the root land means land in English, like surface land. So yeah. So you good, Atharv? You got the notes down? 
Nice. Okay, we'll move on from there. Next, Berg. What do you guys think Berg means? You got I think I think Berg means like SETI, I guess, because it's a picture. <laughs> oh no, sorry. That the pictures just ignore them. That's not. It's just oh. extra. Decoration. Well, I still think it's like city or something because okay. something Berg means. Okay, <laughs> I think I know what you're talking I think, I, but yeah, Atar. No, I don't know. I don't know it. I think Berg might mean something like junk. Chunk, yeah, that's a good idea. It's so like basically, iceberg. Iceberg yes. is kind of like a chunk of ice. Yes, yes, exactly. So, iceberg, berg means mountain. It's basically like a chunk, but um, um, berg means mountain. Yeah, so iceberg is a mountain of ice, in a sense. That's useful. So, anytime you hear berg, just B-E-R-G. Easy. Next up, Deutsch. So, Deutsch, I'll just give it this one to you guys. Deutsch means German. And I have a Skype logo on top of it. Ignore that. That's useless. And yeah, so Deutsch means German uh, in their own language. So Deutschland means Germany. And yeah, so that's pretty cool. Yep. I have a question. Yeah. I thought it's not pronounced Deutschland, but Dashland. Well, yes, you could pronounce it the proper way. I sort of have an accent on uh, pronouncing German things. Like the, I can't really do the guttural sound at all, but you can do Deutschland, oi, because EU means the oi, the ch, and then sh, and then land, Deutschland. But it's actually with a T or something, but German, uh, German pronouncers are a lot better at pronouncing these things, but yeah. So if you know the better way to pronounce it, or you could search it up, it's a lot better, but yeah. Next up is the word bot or bond, band. So what do you guys think the word bond means? Yeah, go ahead, Atar. Uh, maybe something to do with music? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good guess. I told that um, English and German means sometimes mean the same thing. So yes. B-A-N-D, band. Yes, yes. Okay, so you're literally the super close. Bond means band, literally, but not the band like the guitar band. It's band like a strip, a band, yeah. like a rubber band. That, they're literally the same thing. So, but in German, you say Bond or Bond. But yeah, so you have Bond Keramik. Or Keramik. And the next stop, you have Keramik. And Keramik is just like the word ceramic. And do you guys know what ceramic stuff is? Yeah, go ahead, Atar. Ceramic is a um, my bathtub is made out of ceramic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So bathtubs, a lot of washroom stuff, uh, sinks, uh, sinks, not metal sinks though. But yeah, so ceramic is um is basically sort of like this glass material, but not glass at all. Definitely, it's it's like clayish type of feel. I don't know. It's it's uh, it's it's stone material, and basically, bond ceramic, uh, means um, a band of ceramic. So a bond ceramic pottery is like um, a ceramic band around the pottery or something like that. <laughs> and basically those two go together perfectly. Next up, music. Does anybody want to guess what this uh, word means? Just say it. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, the previous guess I made. Yes, yes. So music means, oh, music means music. <laughs> And that's pretty easy. And the next, uh, Nacht. I'll give this one to you guys. Nacht means night. It's sort of close, but you know. And what does Nacht music mean? Does anybody guess? Yeah, go ahead, Athar. <laughs> music that is played in the night. Sorry, say that again, I can hear. Music that is played in the night. Yes, exactly. So night music. So basically a lullaby. So anything for the night, night music. Yeah. <clears throat> and next up. Mittel or metal. Any guesses for metal? Yeah, cut it off. Metal? Yeah, metal means metal. So, metal hand means metal hand. Or, I'm not quite sure. I was actually saying metal, M E T. Oh, okay. Well, what, I, what it is, is middle, but yeah. So, you're basically getting the hang of it, though. You, you know that it's the same thing as English, but you're just translating it to the wrong thing. But that's Still perfectly normal. And then 
Shula. Is it, it like, like? Yeah, go ahead. Is it, is it like school? Perfect. That's exactly what it is. School. Uh, great job. So basically, Shula or school. Say something. Yeah, go ahead. Um. So. Um. There's a spelling bee word, real school. Its meaning was a type of German school system. Yeah. Something like that. I'm actually not quite sure, but if it is, then good job. I didn't search that up, but I don't know by heart. <clears throat> but it definitely has something to do with schools. I think it's a German school system for boys or something. I don't remember. I haven't searched that up word up in a while. So next up, we had Welt, which means world. So actually, let me go back. Did you guys um take the notes? I'm not. I'm kind of going fast. Okay. At least. I'm good. Okay, you guys all kind of understanding at least, understanding most things. Thumbs up. It's okay. Yeah, okay, good. Okay, it's going quick, but I just want to get as many things as possible. It's like sort of overpacked this uh, this lesson. Next up, we have Welt, which means world, like I said. And then, so what do you guys think politique means? Yeah, go ahead, that's our Relating to government or politic? Yeah, okay, okay. I'll, I'll ask some other people because I thought I was normally the only one who was raising their hands. So, politique means politics. So, does anybody want to guess what belt politique is? And I thought I'd just wait to see if anybody else wants to answer. Belt politique. Yeah, go ahead, Yuya. Like world politics? Yes, exactly. It means literally politics of the world, politics that go on in the world. And then macht politik. Macht means might, like strength, like you're super mighty. That's macht. And does anybody want to guess what macht politik means? Anybody else other than Athar this one time? Let's see. Because Athar, if you've been. Yeah, go ahead, Sophie. Sophie. I was going to say a joke, but I honestly don't know it. <laughs> oh, you don't? Okay. Mach I was going to say Donald Trump, but that's kind of mean. No, that's, 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 that's. Actually, so far correct. Okay, Athar, go ahead. Um, mock, um, mock politics means politics that are strong. Yeah, that's a, that's another good way of saying it. Uh, Sunny, you want to try? President. Yes, that's that's uh, pretty close. So basically, mock politic is when you have politics, but um, strength is involved. So like a president is very either not strong as in. Um, like physically strong, but their um, their campaigning is strong. They're politically strong, things like that. So macht politik, or maybe they're nuclearly strong. Like they have a lot of weapons, like Trump and that kind of thing. So yeah, so uh, President uh, Trump, those kind of things. Uh, strong politics. That's basically what it means. Next we have Pfeffer. This is also root. You guys may not have. It may have seemed hard, but does anybody want to guess what Pfeffer means? I thought, yeah, go ahead. Pepper? Pepper, yes, exactly. So pepper means pepper. And now, anytime you guys hear pepper, you can ask, does this word have the root pepper, the German root pepper, meaning pepper? And if they say yes, you instantly know P-F-E-F-F-E-R. -F -F -E and then it's pretty simple because you got P-F right out of the way. So pepperness, yeah. And the next up, burst. Burst means sausage. And sausage, Germans use a lot of sausages. Um, not quite sure why. If you if you look at um cartoons, they use they have like the German stereotype. They have sausages or things like that. So that's what Wurst means. Like Bratwurst, that's the type of sausage. And then Stott. Does anybody want to guess what Stott means? Okay, I thought. Go ahead. <laughs> Something like a ranking. Yeah, that's like it kind of yeah. sounds like the word stat statistics. Stat statistics. Okay, that's that's a close one. Um, does anybody else want to try? It's close to stop stats. Uh, but, yeah, go ahead, Sophie. Um, start. <laughs> okay, that's that's a little bit further, but that's still a good try. Ria, you want to try? Um, like the economy. Economy. Okay, uh, actually, that's getting a little closer to what it is, I thought, okay, this is the last one, I'll give you guys after. Uh, can you give a word that has that root in it? Uh, starten, starten, 
stun something. I had an, it's in the rest of the slideshow, but um, it probably won't help you as much because okay. Scott means. I thought stink. it might say something like Scott prefers Scott wears. Oh wait, Scott starts in politic or something like that. I something to do with politics, state politics, and that's oh. oh, yeah. So that's something or the state of something like the state of mind. But that that's that yeah. It's not that useful, but it's good because you have the double A there, which is pretty important. Next up, we have Kuchen. Oh, yeah, take your notes. Yeah, yeah. If you guys want to take your notes. What does Scott mean in state, right? State, yeah. And you might want to do a little bit more research on what kind of state, either a state of mind, a state of matter, because it might change around. So that's something good to uh, search up. Or state as in region. Yeah, exactly. That's a it's it's sort of confusing, but that's it's debated upon, but we'll go over it after. So now Kuchen. Uh I think I'll just go over, tell you guys this one because we're kind of running out of time. Kuchen means kitchen. Oh oops. <laughs> Kuchen means kitchen, and you guys will see that later. And the CH coming in handy. And also another note is the K is very common in German. You guys might want to write that down. Like you see that all the time, like in ceramic, instead of C, use K's and stuff. It's, it's pretty weird, but it's helpful. So next, wonder means wonder, like wonderful or a lot of wonders, things like that. And then kind, does anybody want to get, guess what kind means? Yeah, I thought. Uh, kid. Kid, yes, yes, that's, a, that's, the, that's what it is. So like child, like kindergarten. So. Kindergarten is a German word, and Kind means kids or child. Yeah. So now we'll we'll try and debunk or not debunk, but uh, demystify some words that you guys might have thought were harder at the beginning. <clears throat> so first of all, you guys not know what Volkswagen is. Anybody else? Ria, I thought you've answered so many questions already. We'll let Ria once. Yeah, go ahead. Um, I think it might be like a brand of car. Yes. Exactly. So it's a car. It's a car brand. Perfect. So that's all you gotta need to know about that. And you guys want to try and um, first, let's try and break down Volkswagen um, by language pattern. So give me some patterns that Volkswagen has. And it's a German car brand, by the way. Any patterns that you guys see from Volkswagen? Yeah, go ahead, Athar. It's not V O L C. It's V O L K. So K. Yes, that's very good. The one I just said. That's perfect. I didn't even note that down, so that's awesome. So K is very common. That's awesome. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> uh, the other ones? Um, never mind. Okay, so the, the pronunciation is Volkswagen. So the V is pronounced like an F, Volk. And then the V is, the W is pronounced as a V. So that's a good one. And yeah, so that's mostly part of it. So what does folk, folk mean in, as a German root? That's German root. Yep, I thought. Uh, folk or folk means good? Close. Uh, it's kind of, it, it's kind of there, but not quite. Anybody else? Yeah, now try again. <laughs> Efficient? Not quite, not quite. It's it's not it's not an adjective, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, Maria. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, sorry. It's good. People? people, yes, perfect. So folk means people, like the folks people, the folks people of the town. So folk means people. So folks. And then what does wagon mean? Yeah, go ahead, sorry. <laughs> wagon means wagon or car. Yes, exactly. So it means car. I also saw that in the uh, the chat. Yeah, so exactly. People car. The people's car. So Volkswagen wants to go with the people. Like, you don't want to make it like a Tesla where only the richest people can buy it. You want it. So it's like the people's car. This is anybody can buy it. Everybody can buy it. That's what the Volkswagen is. So, yeah. And then now put together, we could have the Volkswagen. So it's perfect. So now you guys, when you guys ever seen Volkswagen, now you'll look at it differently. You'll see, oh, people car. It's it's completely different. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And then now uh, I'm going to test you guys some words or patterns 
Um, it's not going to be an actual test. I'm just going to like say the word and then either you guys can put into the chat how you guys think it's spelled and then just change your answer time to time. Like give me something, you know, to go around with. So, yeah. Wait, so, can you stop for a minute? I'm just writing the meaning of wedding. Yep, go ahead. So write all your notes, everybody. Write everything you guys have and then put it all down. Okay, done. Nice, okay. So you guys can use your notes, everything. It's just perfectly fine. I'm going to say a word and then um, you can either put it in the chat or just like, you know, it's whatever. It's not actually a test or anything. We're just going to talk about the word. So first of all, abver. Wait, Ryan. I have a question quickly. Yeah, good. Do we yeah. have to put our notes away? No, no, no. This is actually not a test. This is just like, we're just together. Like, even if after you put out your answer, we're just going to go over and you can put out like a hundred answers. I don't really care. Like, we're just, well, you don't, you don't have to put out an answer at all. It's all good. So abver, yeah, we have A, B, W, E, H, R. I thought if you want to say, uh, yeah, just go ahead. Same thing. A Same thing, okay. Yeah. And, um, give me the definition around, or give me a few roots of it. Yeah, Tharv? Uh, can I say both of them, or only yeah, go, uh, um, Give me one, give me one, give me one. Okay, I'll just say the definition. It okay. has the word ab, which means away. And the word where, which means defense, military defense, so away defense, kind of. Exactly, yeah. So German is, defense, yeah. Does abwehr mean something like not defended? Uh, not quite. Uh, abwehr is the German defense, but they're the German intelligence. So I think the abwehr were away from Germany, and they were in some other place gathering intelligence. So that's why they're abwehr. They're away from defense. I don't know, it's kind of, in, they're away from Germany gathering defense. It's a weird thing. Couldn't it be called something like Abdash? 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 Uh, I don't know. You might want to search that up. I don't want to give you guys false information. And anything in this lesson, you might want to search up later if there is any um, wrong stuff. But I'm pretty sure most of this is perfectly fine for you. Okay. So, yep. So next up, uh, the word uh, doppelganger. Doppelganger. We didn't go over this at all. Not many roots here, but... Doppelganger. You guys might know this word. Uh, you could either put a test in chat or Ria, you want to try anything? Just give anything about doppelganger. You, you muted. Um, I think like a language part pattern in doppelganger is like like the like the O sound is spelled E L, I think. Yes, that's perfect. I didn't even take note of that. That's perfect. So E L, the O is not L E, but it's E L. So that's a that's a good uh, German pattern. So in the chat, we have a few LEs in there. And that's why when you learn the German pattern, EL, that changes things. So that's a good German pattern to know. Good job. So are there any what, people who want to give anything else about doppelganger, like patterns or how to spell it or uh, roots? Yeah, Tharv? <laughs> Is this spelling D-O-P-O-L-L-G-A-N-G-E-R? Not quite. I don't. I didn't hear it quite well, but um, don't forget it's the doppel o sound is e l. So let's break this down. So um, this one might be a little different. This is a word that sort of doesn't follow the um, the German patterns as much. So I'm gonna first go over. So what is the duh sound in German or the duh sound? Yeah, what is it? What's that sound? How do you spell it? Just say it out loud. Duh. Yeah, just say it. Uh... It's, it wasn't in the notes. Just say, what does the duh sound in German sound like? Yeah, duh. In the notes. Think about in English, too. Duh. How do you spell duh? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, D. Just D. That's it. Like, like anything in English, basically. D. That's it. So, simple enough. Ah, ah. So, in this case, the ah is spelled not with an A, because I told you guys it was A, but it's sometimes O. And in this case, you have to actually know the word O, but da. So in this case, it's an O. That's a pretty um, big thing. And then the double, there's a double P that I want to make note. This, um, this honestly, I don't see this very often since it is sort of a word that's sort of morphed a lot. But yeah, da, bullganger. And the O, what makes the O sound? Does anyone want to tell me the O sound? The O sound. Yep. Are you saying the O W sound? No, no, the sorry, okay. Let me the doppel, like the la, la, the la sound is said. 
Sophie, yeah, go on. You're muted again. I think it's um, EL, I think, or... Yeah, perfect. Because... EL, so, so far, we have this. So we have D-O-P-P-E-L. So that's the beginning of this word. And then next, we have D-O-P-P-E-L, yep. And then ganger, it's just like English, and a lot of people have already written into the chat. So D-O-P-P-E-L, G-A-N-G-E-R, perfect. So uh, yeah, so that's basically the rest of doppelganger. Did anybody you know what doppelganger is? The doppelganger? Yeah, we are. Um, I think it's like a person who looks sort of similar to you. Yes, yes, exactly. So your doppelganger, like on in Germany, is some other person or something. Like you know, that's it's it's a weird uh, thing. But yeah. So next up, uh, we have Hausenpfeffer. Hausenpfeffer. Give me the roots, patterns, how to spell it, and I'll get you a third. Uh, the spelling of it. Okay, go ahead. Hausenpfeffer. Uh -huh. It follows every single rule we have. P F E F F E R. Um, no, wait. Never mind. Hausenpfeffer, not Pfeffer, Hausen. Hausenpfeffer. Does anybody else want to try? Hausenpfeffer. Cool. Oh, it's Hausenpfeffer, not Pausenpfeffer. My bad. Hausen. It's not Hausenpfeffer, it's Ha. Haas and pepper. So for okay, yeah, I thought if you want to go again. Um, what is the first part? Pause and pepper. Ha ha ha, not pa. It's the H sound, by the way. Haas and pepper. Does it start with the H? Yes. Okay. So <clears throat> let's break this down once again. So everybody, put in chat what when I say a sound, put in chat how to spell that sound. What makes the ha sound? The ha. <clears throat> the ha sound. Not the how sound, just the huh. Like the H sound. What makes the H sound? It's one letter. Yeah, H. So the huh sound is spelled with an H. Just make that down. So and what makes the ah uh sound? It was the first pattern I showed you guys. The ah uh sound. Yep. Just put it in chat. The ah uh sound. What makes the ah uh sound? Ah. Uh. Yes, yeah, so we have, yep. Okay, so ah uh is not with A, W. The pattern is A. So any sound with ah uh is A. So, so far we have H, A. Next up, what makes the Z sound? Yep, I thought. S. You sure? The Z sound is with an S? Yeah. <laughs> the the Z sound is with double S. Yeah. What's the Z sound? Yeah, I think the Z, I don't yeah. know, I know that Z sound is S. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, I heard you, I heard you wrong, okay. Z sound is with an S, yeah, you're right, sorry, my bad. So, what makes, uh, the rest is Ha Zen, and this is sort of confusing, but I, it's not actually a, um, a pattern or anything, Ha Zen, it's E-N, Ha Zen. And then, what's the root pfeffer? What's the root pfeffer mean? Yeah, go ahead, Atar. Upper and its spelling is P F E F F E R. Yep, perfect. So, does anybody want to try spelling it in chat? We've gone through everything on how to spell it. So, the uh, N sound is E N. That's sort of not really a pattern, but it goes. The Z sound is with an S. I thought, if you remember, you told me that the Z sound is with an S. Don't forget about that. It's an M Z road Z. Yeah, it's okay. Pause and pepper. Nice. We have some in chat. Nice. Okay. So basically, we at the beginning, you guys might have forgot some of the roots and patterns. Like it's sort of it's a lot to take in, but as soon as you memorize them or know them a little bit, then you could basically grab out your cheat sheet and think, huh? Okay. What makes the huh sound? H. What makes this sound? What makes that sound? And then you basically construct the word fully, just like reverse design song. It's so simple to construct the entire word with the thing. So it's perfect like that. So at the beginning, you guys might get some things wrong, but the more you um, go through these patterns, they'll almost 100% be true to itself. So it, the pfeffer will always be P-F-E-F-F-E-R. So does that seem, does it make German seem a little easier now? 
make it you guys can see yeah you guys have the cheat it's a lot of information i know like it makes it seem more intimidating but it doesn't seem as hard because you know what to spell what with so basically most of the german words you come by will follow these rules there's definitely more rules always but and exceptions but you know these are the common ones that'll help you go through most things so yeah you don't have to memorize them but the more you use them the more it'll help you guys so that's mostly what I want to teach you guys because I want to show you guys that the, a lot of these patterns and roots are helpful. And I had to squeeze a lot of this in in a very short amount of time. And I'm kind of over time. Let me go over to the end. And hopefully now you're not a pro, but hopefully you can, you have the right tools to become a pro. So that's hopefully going to help you guys. Yes, even spelled it with Hasenpfeffer. So think about at the way beginning, you, you guys wouldn't have be able to spell Hasenpfeffer at all. Like you, you would have been confused maybe H-A-Z-E-N-P-H-E-F-E-R. Like that may have been how you spelled it. But now with this, you know the patterns of German. So make sure you know that this is mostly for German, of course. And there are always going to be more patterns that you could learn. But this is just the beginning. So that's really helpful for you guys. Hopefully you guys understood that. And it was really fast. I'm so sorry for that. I just wanted to squeeze everything I could in. And hopefully you guys, you guys have enough notes for everything. And yeah. And thumbs up, you guys all got that down. Perfect. Okay, awesome. As Even if it's sort of confusing right now, the more you go through it, it'll be perfect. I know you guys will be fine. So you guys are all smart. You guys got this. And yeah, so time's up. And uh, I think that's it. Uh, I guess I'll see you guys all later.